I'm here with Teta Tlauron from Ebon International, which is an NGO based in the Philippines, working on a range of issues from climate justice to trade justice to financial justice and human rights. Hi, Teta. Um, mm -hmm. How are you doing? Cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the UK, a lot of us don't necessarily see or we see climate change as being something that's quite abstracted from other issues such as militarism and police violence. How do you and your organization see these issues as being interconnected? For us in the South, especially climate justice is a very, very, um, uh, it's an issue that's very close to our hearts. It's, it talks about our lives and livelihoods and how we are impacted and um, how we are reacting to a lot of things around us. Most of them, you know, not really of our own doing. Um, for instance, uh, we see the issue of militarism as linked to climate change, especially for instance in the Philippines, you know, with what happened with the uh, super typhoon Haiyan. Um, you know, it's a very unfortunate uh, thing that happened to a lot of our people, but the way um, our government has been uh, um, doing rehabilitation uh, after Super Typhoon Haiyan, it's causing a lot of militarization in the process. For instance, you know, communities that had been displaced, of course you want to go back. That's your home, that's your livelihood, that's your life. But now people are not allowed to go back to their communities where they live and they're being relocated forcefully, you know, not of their own will in the name of climate change. Certain areas have been declared as danger zones, so they're not allowed to go back anymore. But in reality, what we see, you know, corporations are being brought in. Um, the rehabilitation plan of the government is to establish um, retirement homes for the rich and famous, I guess. Certainly not the average Filipino and certainly not the Filipinos who have been living there once before the super typhoon. Um, we see that um, military and police forces private security forces are increasingly being used you know to drive people away from their from their fields from their lands to clear the way for palm oil plantations for instance you know in the name of climate change so that you guys in Europe can have clean gas um, we are being driven away from our communities from our homes with the use of police military and private security forces so there's really that you know natural linkage between what goes on uh, in terms of trade in terms of finance in terms of how it's impacting and affecting us as a people and how do you think as a grassroots movement or as sort of civil movements, we can try to break that connection between the government and militarism when it comes to approaching crises like climate change? Well, for one, you know, we have to debunk the narrative that it's about security, it's about um, uh, it's about um, corporations. We, we need to challenge the existing narrative that it's about security. Basically, we have all of this militarist response. We have wars going on because our governments are so complicit with the elites and with the corporations in order for them to have more access to resources from our countries, from our communities. And uh, they are using force and violence against our people to drive us away so that they can protect investments of companies from Europe, from North America that go into our country so that you know they have access to resources, they have access to uh, trade routes, etc. And of course, more importantly, they have access to markets. Yeah. So we see that uh, we need to... We need to work together, you know, you guys in Europe uh, and elsewhere, um, we need you to raise louder noises, challenging your governments, protecting European corporations' interests that are doing a lot of damage to, to our people. And in terms of, of building solidarity from between the Global South and the Global North, what do you think are the main things that the Global North need to change and how they approach these issues, particularly the movements in the Global North, in order to kind of heed those calls and act in true solidarity with the fights that you're engaged in? Don't bring us to your countries to talk about our situation. You know, it's like, it's very hard, but it's the sad reality that colleagues and comrades and allies from the North bring us from the south to talk to your people about how we are poor oppressed deprived we would rather you know in the true spirit of solidarity you see us fighting together us fighting our governments 
uh, your governments, your corporations, and you also holding your own governments and corporations accountable for all the damage that's being done to the to our to our countries and our communities. I think you know we can work together in the spirit of solidarity and not look at us as a, a charity case, uh, not look at us as a you know exhibit A, mm -hmm. <laughs> exhibit B, but really. How do we now uh, walk together to hold both our governments and the elites and the corporations accountable and demand justice from, from all of them?